Welcome to Wasted Local Talent. Talent. What is up, everybody? I'm Daniel. And I'm Jed. And today we are wasting our talent, social distance-like-ish with... This is Mickey Polly. I am owner and operator of Warrior Body. Warrior Body. Something that Jed and I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> Jed more so. Everything's treated me well. You haven't we haven't hung out in such a long time. I've lost like thirty pounds. Oh wow. I've gained Ooh. those thirty pounds. Yeah. <laughs> I mean I still don't have a warrior body. <laughs> well, like it's a warrior body that's like fifteen years past its prime. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a retired board body. So, Mickey, tell us about um, your business. Tell us like a little bit about it. Yeah, so it is. It's a health and fitness business. Um, it's very much community based. So we're about five years old. We were five years old um, this past December, so December 2019, um, and it started. So we're located in Morgantown, West Virginia, and it's, it's. I mean, it's group fitness. It's solely group fitness classes, high intensity. Um, we have a mix of strength conditioning. We do different types of strongman stuff within our class. Um, and it's for literally anyone. Like our youngest is 13 years old. Our oldest is 73 years old. So, um, you know, we're your body really about, you know, it's not, you know, a specific body or person per se. It's really about the individual and kind of finding that warrior within themselves and giving them the confidence to, just really show themselves how strong they are both mentally and physically. And so that's what we really embody in the program. It's more than just fitness. We really um, help our members to see that, you know, these habits that they're creating carry over into all other aspects of their lives. And so, you know, when it first started, sure, it was just fitness, but it was the really the individuals that started that I started to attract that were really making the community what it, what it is now And just seeing some of the things that the warriors uh, just needed, needed to work on in terms of, you know, what really is health? You know, if we have the fitness aspect, we have the nutrition aspect, but, you know, mindset is something that we, you know, wake up with and go to bed with every day. And so the fitness aspect of it is just a, an outlet for them to kind of discover some of that. So Today, you know, Warrior Body is more than just fitness. So when people ask me about it, I'm like, you know, it's just a place for for you to come to really be able to, I mean, yeah, work out, but really discover more about yourself. Okay. So you said you've been doing it for five years? Mm-hmm. And, yes. And I, I hate bringing this up because it's, but it's so like, you know, pertinent right now is with mm-hmm. COVID, how has that really affected what you've been doing? So when COVID happened, I was already working on creating an online portion of Warrior Body. Um, And so because I had already had majority of it up and going, I was able to to, um, transfer everyone to more of an online platform uh, fairly quickly. And so we Zoomed a few classes a week and like we have our private Facebook group. So we were able to continue communication with members that way. Um, but now that we're back, the gym's opened back up. It's been open back up for about a month and a half now, maybe two months. Um, you know, of course, we have to limit classes now or class sizes. Like before, we would have 30 plus people in a class, and now we've limited it. We've chosen to limit it to 15 so that we can make sure we're maintaining social distancing and um, also equipment. We're only allowing kettlebells and dumbbells to be used right now, and no one's allowed to share. So um, that kind of helps us make sure we have enough equipment for everybody. Um, but we do, we still have several members that aren't quite comfortable in, you know, in coming back yet. And that's, you know, we understand. And so we, um, you know, we're able to Zoom more classes now that we're in person. So we just are able to, you know, have our live classes and then have those from home who are Zooming in on some of those classes as well. Okay. Well, that's good that you're set up for that. Um, I know a lot of businesses, you know, have either closed or still closed or, you know, they're trying to do stuff. And it's, especially with fitness and having people that are working out together in a room, you know, it's nice that you can actually still be doing that um, through all Mm -hmm. of this. 
Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and that's one of the things that a lot of them just had missed was each other. You know, the communication that they, you know, it's, I mean, it's nice to see each other, like, you know, through their cameras and stuff. But, you know, you really have that experience, like, in person. And so, you know, a lot of them, while some of them are like, I'm, I'm really scared to come back, but I just need my community. You know, like, it's worth it to them to be, you know, overcome that fear of what's happening in the world to be with their community. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a big struggle, I think, with with health in general, um, not necessarily just fitness, but um, it's I always found it so much harder uh, when we when we moved back here and uh, bought our house, we got a home gym and I was like, oh, sweet. I'm never going to have to go to a gym ever again. I'll just work out in my own house. And then like you try to do it when it's just you and there's like no one else holding you accountable. And it's so much harder because, you know, you get used to that. I don't want to say like vacuum, but you get used to the the space. And like you said, the community aspect of it. And especially for me coming from the military where like everybody, you know, had to hold each other accountable uh, going from that to civilian life and trying to stay in shape and, and stay fit and everything. It was a huge adjustment for me. So I totally oh, yeah. get that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, and it's not just within our warrior community, like we're seeing it all over, you know, and, and so trying to keep our warriors accountable and help them stay motivated. Cause it's also, it's a hard time right now too. I don't want to be like, you should be motivated and getting back in the gym. Like that's what you should do. Cause it's just a weird time right now. So trying yeah. to respect where everyone is and, um, but just show them that support, but then just let, you know, the community as a whole, you know, of Morgan town or whoever, just know that, you know, we're here to support you as well in any way that you need, that you need it. Mm-hmm. So as far as like different classes, like what, what do the classes like entail whenever you're, uh, like you're teaching the classes? So, like I said, it's a mix of um, weight training and just conditioning. Um, It's it's like a high-intensity style fitness class. And so, um, we use use kettlebells a lot, dumbbells, barbells, um, flip tires, hit tires with stuff, um, battle ropes. And so, it's just a variety of equipment that we use. A lot of people do ask us what the difference is between what we do and what CrossFit is. And so you know, CrossFit is, you know, they're their own brand. They have their own style of training. A lot of their stuff is more Olympic lifting, um, barbell training. And, you know, for us, it's, you know, like I said, we have the use of, um, it's more circuit style training than, than anything. And so, you know, but both are, are big on, on community. And so, but ours is a little bit more, I think, scalable to just members of all kinds. We're not quite as competitive. We're just there to say, Hey, like, you know, this literally is for anybody. And this is, you know, whether you're like, again, you're 13 or 73 years old, like you can join us. And so, um, but that's one of the biggest questions that I get is what's the difference. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we've, you know, both are, are great. Um, but it just depends if, you know, it just depends on what you want, what, if, what kind of style of lifting that you want with within both. Yeah. I know um, whenever I used to lift, I'd one, I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan of gyms just like the intimidation. But like Jed said, me working out at home, it's like, it's, it's up here, but I don't do it. Um, and the last time that I was really like lifting was with our friend Josh. And he, um, I feel like whenever you said like, you're, you're kind of like circuit training. That's kind of like what we, I feel like that's what, what, what we kind of did where it was like, we didn't go in and just, just do one thing. You know, it was a multitude of every, of different things every single night. And that actually helped me, more than just having like today's leg day, you know, today's back day, today's this day, you know, and doing, you yeah. know, and a, a lot of cardio, um, is what we did too. And I feel like that for me personally was a lot better than, you know, just your, your gym dude type of, you know, I'm going to go in and do mm-hmm. arms today. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's just, it's a whole body experience, you mm-hmm. know, and it's, like when we have women come in and look at those big tires, cause our, well now our lightest tire I think is 250, but like it goes up to like 700 pounds and, you know, we send people out there to go flip tires and you know, they're, it's, 
it, at first it's, you know, I can't do that. Like I'm not strong enough to do that. And then all of a sudden they're doing it. And so it's just like a, it's just a massive confidence booster to, you know, that carries over into all other aspects of your life. Cause if you can see your own strength with flipping a tire or pressing a kettlebell or barbell over your head, like what else can I do, you know, in my life that's going to keep pushing me forward. Yeah. Like Jed yeah, growing I- hair. Just believe Jed and you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I had I we always fire back and forth at each other and I haven't seen Jed honestly in what like six months so it's been a while yeah, yeah so I had, oh, to, had to fire my shots you're uh, <laughs> you're actually like stealing all my talking points I was gonna bring up CrossFit and then uh, and then you you did uh, and then the other thing that I was gonna bring up was I wanted to ask uh, so my wife and I uh, were not as you know, healthy people as we were, but we still stay in pretty good shape. We, we cycle a lot. We hike a lot. We run a lot. Um, and we do still lift, but, uh, when we first met, you know, obviously I was in a lot better shape at the time, but she started, uh, getting into powerlifting with me. Yeah. And I remember there were so many, like so many women throughout the years have approached her And they're always like, you know, you look great. Like, what do you do? How do you, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you diet? What are you doing? Like, what are you exercising? And she's like, oh, I really just like lift weights and eat like reasonably healthy. And they're like, oh, I don't want to get big and bulky. And, and Mm -hmm. it's like, no, no. Do you deal with that a lot? Um, not as much as I used to. I, um, I get a lot of the, I want to tone. Mm-hmm. But I don't think a lot of people really understand what toning means. Like that means you still have to build some muscle in it's order muscle. to that tone look. And so it's just education. Like you see, I mean, you, like I used to be around a lot of strong women. And so, you know, a lot of them are going to be strong for, you know, for them. And, you know, and a lot of them are, are bigger and, and so, but then they lift weights and, you know, and I think a lot of women see that and they're like, I don't want to be that. Like, I don't want to, put on size. And so, you know, I think it, it just, like I said, it just comes to education and to know that, you you know, you have, your training has to be, you, if you want to get a certain size, you have to specifically train for that. If you want to put on a ton of mass, a ton of muscle, you have to eat and train that way. You know, just simply going in a few days a week and lifting weights isn't going to make you all of a sudden blow up. So it might, it's going to help you put on some muscle and will probably give you that tone look that you're looking for. But a lot of women tend to get away from that and to, and do more cardio because, because of that. So not quite as much anymore. Uh, it's funny because, you know, I do talk a lot about strength training within our program because we do use a lot of different, um, like I said, just different types of equipment. And a lot of the women are, really starting to enjoy more of the weights than cardio. And so in our cardio, like we don't, it's not your traditional cardio. Like it's, and it's funny, like treadmills and all that, like that's, that's not the traditional cardio. Like your traditional type of cardio is like more of like that functional fitness, strongman style of training. You know, we just have modernized all of that to, to using treadmills and all these pieces of cardio equipment. And so, you know, pushing the prowler, flipping the tires, um, pulling the sleds, dragging things, pushing things, um, battle ropes, like those types of things. Like, you know, they don't feel like cardio to people, but like, but it is, it's like that secret conditioning that they're getting and not realizing it. And yeah. so, you know, it kind of helps them look at it training a little bit differently. Well, and it's, it's nice too. Like you, you said, you know, it's functional fitness. So, it, it, I've noticed throughout the years that getting away from the traditional, you know, you lift in a gym, you go just lift weights and that's, that's what you do. Like, and then you have your cardio separately and you get into that more functional style fitness of, and you know, you brought up CrossFit. I think that CrossFit when it first started coming out was very different than what it's kind of turned into now. And it was back then, you know, we did a lot of CrossFit whenever I was in uh, the military because at the time it was it was all about functional fitness. 
It wasn't so much about the competition and the sport aspect of it. Um, and what's great about that functional fitness is, you know, I can go camping out in the woods and get a workout in. I oh, can yeah. be on the road in a hotel room and just have my luggage and get a workout in. Like you can get a workout in anywhere with what you have around you mm-hmm. because you're yeah. not constricted to, you know, very specific movements and workouts. Yep. Yeah. Now, do you guys, um, I kind of very briefly looked over your guys' website. Uh, I try not to recon too much information beforehand, but uh, (laughs) do you guys offer any additional services like nutrition, counseling, diet plans, anything like that? So we have a health coach on staff who's also one of our actual like fitness coaches as well. And so it's, she doesn't do necessarily like actual meal plan. Um, but she does, it's like nutritional counseling. Um, now we do have like a, like when warriors sign up, like we have just an overall general like nutrition plan for them. And we do talk about nutrition and try to answer as many questions as we can. Um, bringing someone on like an actual someone in nutrition on staff that could provide more one-on-one services for them is something that, um, I am currently looking for. So that could work with the health coach, but as we've grown, um, that is, there's definitely more of a need for that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of time when people are first wanting to get into, you know, health and, and fitness, um, they focus a little bit too much on, I need a workout plan. I need a diet plan. I need somebody to tell me everything to do because I think yeah. that kind of breeds, I don't want to say a dangerous mentality, but it, it kind of like, if, if people want to stay healthy in the long run, you can't look at it as something that has a start date and an end date. You have to change the way that you do things. Like yes. you can't look at your workouts anymore as something like that you have to plan, it should just be part of your day and, and your diet the same way. Like you shouldn't get so hung up on every meal that you sit down. Don't overanalyze it. Just make small changes that you know that, that you can hold on to long term, And that's where you're going to see the biggest gains. So I, I wanted to ask that just to make sure, but it's, it's one of those things that I think people get a little bit too hung up on that at times. Yeah. Well, and I get one of the, like our nutrition approach is always whole food based. So like people ask, what's your approach to nutrition? You know, do you do low carb? Do you do keto? Can I have bread? Can I have this? And, you know, I'm like, you can have whatever you want to have. Like, and, and this is the thing, like people know what to eat. People know we need more, we need to eat fruits and vegetables. People know we need to eat good lean meats. It's just, it's a matter of that's where the accountability comes into play is I just need someone to just hold me accountable to it. And the the plan that we have for just for everyone, like I said, it's more whole foods based. It's just teaching people how to eat, teaching them how to to put meals together, you know, and they're like, they look at that plan. They're like, this is a lot of food. And I'm like, it's really not a lot of food, but we have in our mindset that less is best. Like we have to constrict what we're eating in order to get the results we want. But the problem is, is that we, we start to, to lessen what we're, you know, what we're eating. And, you know, then we start working out and then our bodies are telling us, well, no, I need you to have more because I, one, I need you to help me recover. And two, like, I need you to help me fuel as well. And so people are wondering like, why am I not losing weight? Why am I not feeling good? Why am I tired all the time? Why am I sore? Like for a week, why am I? And the first thing I always say is, what are you like, what is your nutrition like? Like, you know, so I'll have them send me a food log or send me something to look at so I can, you know, have that conversation with them and say, okay, we need to add more of this in. And we try to take it from an approach of you can't have this, you can't have that, you need to remove this. It's let's keep adding more of the good stuff, more fruits, more vegetables, more lean proteins, more complex carbohydrates in there so that it leaves less room for the, you know, the, the sugary, the less not so great stuff. And so it's like, you don't want to label things bad because what happens when we label things bad? Well, they become curiosity and people want to go <laughs> toward that more than they do the other. So, you know, 
I mean, and I'm honest with them. You know, I, I love pancakes. I love cake. I love sweets. And, you know, I still enjoy those things. But I don't want them as much because I feel my body and I eat well with, with good whole foods. And, you know, it's just it's teaching them. And like you mentioned before, it's, there isn't a deadline to this. There's, you know, it's teaching you how can I work this into my life for the rest of my life. And so, and it's really hard at first because change is hard and you think there's no way I can do this. Like there's no way I can prep my food and, you know, go to a pizza restaurant with my friends and choose to get, you know, healthy chicken salad versus eating all the pizza. Or maybe you do want to go have pizza with your friends and that's okay too. But that doesn't mean have pizza for every single meal. That means that, you know, you've, you've eaten well, you know, throughout the week and going and having pizza and maybe a drink with some friends isn't that isn't bad. So it's just, that's, and that's where the mindset piece really comes in because I don't want them to see as a start and end date. I want them to see how they can truly make this work for them and how it looks different for everybody. I have warriors that that literally prep every single meal in a container for the entire week. I have some, and this is true for myself. I'll prep for three days and then I'll just put stuff in containers as I go. And I'll do another small prep. So it just, it looks different for everybody. It doesn't have to be this perfect one and done picture. You just continue to work on what works for you and what makes most sense for you. Yeah, I think, I think one of the most uh, dramatic moments in, uh, in nutrition for me was shortly after I met my wife, um, I had been, I was super scrawny growing up. I was a super skinny kid, um, kind of grew into my body a little bit. I got, got a little bit, I filled out some, but when we met, I still really wanted to pack on some more muscle. I wanted to get bigger. Um, I think I was like maybe 170 pounds when we met 180 pounds. And so we would work out together and, you know, she would hear me constantly complaining about, man, I just can't like put on weight. I just, I eat so much and I can't put on weight and blah, blah, blah. So finally, you know, because she had lost a lot of weight whenever we met um, and had done so through lifting weights and dieting. Um, so she's like, well, why don't you start tracking what you're eating? And I'm like, oh, no, I eat I eat so much. I eat so oh, yeah. much. You know, there's no way I'm, I'm telling you that's not the problem. And she's like, just just like get an app on your phone or bring a notebook with you and just start writing down what you're eating. Track how many calories you're eating a day. And. Once I put pen to paper, it was like I was not eating anywhere near the amount of food that I needed to be eating if I wanted to put on any kind of weight. And you can apply it the same way for somebody who wants to lose weight, you know, because that's that's the first thing everybody says. Well, I really don't eat that much. It's like, well, do you? You know, yeah. you actually keep track of what you eat every day. And it's so easy in today's world. You know, you have your phone with you everywhere. There are so many apps that you can get on your phone that can do food tracking for you. And that is such a shocking thing for a lot of people to once they actually realize how absent mindedly you can just go throughout your day just eating empty calories all over the place and you don't even realize you're doing it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, when we have, especially our health coach, because she almost always has her clients keep a food blog. For her and it's always you need to eat more and it surprises people every time because they're like what do you mean I need to eat more because we're so used to being told you need to eat less you need to be in a caloric deficit but and that's true but like if you're too much in a caloric deficit then your body is going to do the opposite and so it's just educating people and again it's just educating them about foods like we like again we all know fruits we all know vegetables but there's a lot of misinformation out there about carbohydrates about good proteins about healthy fats and so you know there's a lot of education that goes into it on her part you know when she's talking with her clients and getting them to be comfortable and to feel comfortable and confident in the food choices that they're making and you're right it's the same thing with wanting to put on weight you know, we think we're eating a lot. We're shoveling food in our mouth, but are we eating like really dense food as well mm-hmm. to help us put that weight on? Like, what are we choosing? What kinds of food are we just, are we just eating tons of fruits and vegetables because they keep us full? Like, you know, we need to be eating like good, solid, 
you know, hearty foods to, and a lot of it to, to put that weight on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a few yeah, years. Also, of- Daniel, what's up? I just I want to point out that uh, she mentioned earlier that you shouldn't have pizza at every meal. I didn't know if you caught that. Or not. <laughs> I caught that. Now I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, a couple years ago, um, I. I talked to a friend of mine, Josh again, actually, and he put me on a meal plan or suggested a meal plan for me. And the amount of food that I was told to eat, I was like, there's no way that I can eat five meals a day. And I was eating every, every few hours, five times a day. I wasn't working out at all because I had just beer gut and it was gross. It's back now. (laughs) Um, but for a month I did that meal plan and I went down two pant sizes in a month just from eating, the way that he suggested. And the only thing that I would drink was water and black coffee, no more beer um, during that month. And after about three days, you know, it, it, it seems like a lot of food is, you know, five meals a day and it was decent portions. And after about three days, about 45 minutes after I would eat, I was hungry again, you know, cause your body gets used to, and it was, you know, vegetables, um, rice, uh, protein, you know, and that was pretty much it. And after a while, your body starts to actually crave that too. And it's hard to get into that cycle of changing your diet. But once you do, that's what your body really craves and what it really wants and needs. And Mm -hmm. that is, well, it's something that I've been trying to get back into, but it's hard with not working with everything. And it's, it's not cheap, you know, it was, but it's, it's actually cheaper in the long run if you think about it because you're not blowing money on junk food and all this other stuff all the time too, so. Right, right. And, you know, and you're right. It, I mean, it is more expensive in the short term, you know, to, but it goes along, what are your goals? Like, what are mm-hmm. your long-term goals? Like, do you want to feel better in the long run? And, you know, there are some ways, like not everything has to be fresh. You know, you mm-hmm. can do canned, you can do some frozen vegetables, like you can do some of those things as well. And so it's just kind of learning what, you know, what side of that health is, is worth spending more on than others. And Mm -hmm. so maybe in the beginning, you know, buying more canned and, and frozen stuff, you know, vegetables and fruits is, is what you're going for. But as you get into it, that might become more important to you to get the, the fresh, the fresh foods, but it's just, it's just like phases, you know, it's a process. And so, you know, some of our warriors will have them, like, they'll start with just the fitness and they won't change anything about their nutrition, but they're just going to focus just on the fitness first. And so they make sure that they consistently come three days a week. And after they've got that down, then they'll start working on mm-hmm. their nutrition piece. And so, and even with the nutrition, like a lot of people don't do well with, with having a meal plan thrown at them. Because if you're, especially if you're a busy mom and you're trying to get kids from, you know, from school and then getting them to, to practices. And, you know, I mean, not now, but um, now they're like together all the time. So I'm sure that schedule is still <laughs> really busy and trying to find time, but you know, that's just a lot to take in all at once. And so, you know, we have like our periodization process where it's, you know, you start at the bottom and it's like, okay, hey, let's start with one thing that we can really work on. Well, maybe it's getting rid of soda, you know? So you start working on cutting back soda and you don't really change a whole lot in your diet quite yet. Um, or maybe it's adding more vegetables in. And so you, you know, so you're adding more vegetables into your diet or, um, you know, I said earlier, I don't like, I don't like telling people you have to remove stuff. So for the soda thing, I would like, we encourage people to, to drink more water. So they're filling their body with more water than they would mm-hmm. the sugary drinks. But, you know, and then once they get that down, then we'll move to the second tier. And then that's actually, you know, being conscious of your, of your meals, of each of your meals, you know, and, um, and then step three might be to follow a little more of a meal plan. Step four is, Hey, let's individualize this. Let's, let's, you know, let's really tune this into you and to your body. And so it's like a, it's a, you just hit it in phases. So you're not quite as overwhelmed as you might be if you just started just everything all at once. And some people can do that. You know, some people can do that and hit it hard and follow it. And that's great. But you know, if you do that and you're finding yourself really overwhelmed with that, you know, instead of just giving up altogether, just kind of acknowledge where you are and say, Hey, like this is overwhelming for me, but I still want to get healthy. Where's a good place for me to start. 
so you know it's really about meeting the individual where they are and that's 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 really important for any health professional to to really you know connect in that way with their client mm-hmm. i think a lot of people get that whole in their mind where they they want that change to happen so fast and it's mm-hmm. it's not going to it's not it's not going to take place overnight and I think it drives a lot of people away from it too, is like they'll try it. They don't see immediate change. So they, they don't think it's going to work and you've really got to be persistent at it. And once you start to see that change, it's more encouraging to keep going with it. So just, you know, if you're listening and you want that change to happen, like don't give up after a day or two or a week, you know, keep on it. And eventually you'll see that change. Absolutely. Absolutely. And like we'll have warriors there with us for a year and they'll finally be like, you know, they'll finally be brave enough to take those progress pictures that they took on day one and a year later. And, you know, the whole time there's that journey, they're like, I just, I'm not, I'm not seeing it. I'm not feeling when they're feeling it, but you know, there's just like that. I wish I was, I wish I was, you know, this weight goal. And, you know, we always encourage measurements and how you're feeling and how you're fitting in your clothes. And, you know, then they go back to see those progress pictures and they're just like, like, holy cow. Mm-hmm. And so, and especially with weightlifting, like a lot of it's not all, you're not going to see all those changes on the scale, you know, you're probably going to see it more in, in measurements and in your pictures. And so, you know, and every, everybody's body's different as well. Like some people might lose more um, weight than others, you know, in the short term. And then, you know, some, it takes a little bit longer. And so you just have to honor that and honor your body, but you also have to be honest with yourself. Are you truly doing what you say you're doing? Are you doing what you know you can be doing? Are you allowing too many excuses in? And, you know, and so it, and some people don't, it's hard to even recognize when an excuse is, is an excuse, you know, because we do it every single day. And so it's, and that's something that we do. I have another, I actually have a mindset program called Warrior Mind. And so that's where we kind of work on recognizing some of those behaviors that we don't stop and take the time to try to recognize. And then once we do that, we kind of work on, um, on, addressing them and being able to replace them but you know it, it's just it's a whole process it's more than just being given a meal plan and a workout plan and saying hey come do this you know this is going to solve all your problems mm-hmm. because it, it's not you know some people there's like that those couple people that it does you know you hand them that plan and you know and that's the person that everyone's focusing on they're like well it worked for this person and i'm like but look Look at everyone else who's also been in this for a long time and they're working hard every single day. You know, go talk to others in the group that, you know, talk about their journey that it's taken them, you know, six months to a year to really get to where they want to be. And so it's, you know, and then you're up against social media with everything that, you know, people post there and, you know, and so it's, it's just trying to trying to bring people back in and just really stay in tune with them and their goals and kind of put those blinders on. So mm-hmm. they're not constantly starting and stopping. Yeah. I, I, I think another big benefit for the functional fitness aspect of it, whenever, and, you know, looking at it, like I really love the, the trend in fit culture. I don't know what, what you would call that, but I, I love the trend towards just calling it, you know, health, because it is, it's a lot more than just, you know, being in good physical shape. It's, Mm -hmm. it's, you know, a good mindset, like you said, and a good work ethic. And on top of that, also, you know, being in good physical condition, but the functional fitness aspect of it, I think for a lot of people, they're not necessarily, you know, only going to see the benefits in terms of either body aesthetics or body image, but also just doing things in day to day life. I mean, if you're, if you just, you know, do, um, you know, a Peloton bike once a day, like, yeah, you're going to be in probably pretty good shape. But when you need to carry all 45 bags of groceries in <laughs> at one time because two trips is unacceptable, like, <laughs> it's going to pay off, you know, or, or, you know, any other situation in life where, where that, that helps. Um, I kind of lost track of this train. It's kind of rolling off the tracks here. <laughs> well, it's but, like like helping somebody carry a couch. Like whenever I lived with you, Jed, and you and Josh are both, you know, you worked out, and then I'm like struggle busting over there. It's like you know, you can't even help a friend move a couch because you're 
you're not you know, doing what you need to be doing. <laughs> yeah, it's all, I mean, it, and I, I remember where I was trying to end up there. Um, I got out of weightlifting originally because I had uh, suffered a couple injuries uh, and it made it hard for me to lift the way that I used to. I couldn't uh, – deadlift was always my, my lift. I love deadlift and I have uh, vertebrae issues now and so that's kind of off the table. I can't really – can't really mess with that because when when that injury flares up, it can get pretty ugly. Um, so I kind of just given up weightlifting, and I gained a lot of weight. And then, like I don't know, six months to a year ago, I decided to, you know, it was time to finally start holding myself accountable again and try to lose some weight. <laughs> it was funny because so I lost about thirty pounds, um, and. You know, everybody would see me and be like, oh, my gosh, you look great. You've lost so much weight, blah, blah, blah. And my wife kept dropping these like subtle hints. And she's like, hey, you know, maybe you don't need to lose any more weight. Maybe like maybe we should like start like trying to work out some, you know. And then finally, one day I was like, listen, I feel like you don't want me to lose weight anymore. And she's like, no, your butt is gone. Like (laughs) we need to get you back around weights again. So I had to like start looking for ways to work out that, you know, like low weight, high volume, functional fitness style workouts, like getting back to my roots before I, I just started doing weight training a lot. And, you know, just the overall like physicality of it is so much better than the, the simple minded, like one, you know, I just, I have to lose weight or I have to gain muscle and, Mm -hmm people get stuck on that one thing and it honestly kind of gets boring after a while. Yeah. And then you get burnt out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, and our bodies are made to move and we have to put it under some type of load in order for it to actually, you know, to get stronger, you know, and we, we want ourselves to get stronger so we can carry couches, carry our groceries, carry our kids. And, you know, but our 73 year old in our group, like he's, he's, solely he joined because he wants to be able to carry his grandkids he wants to be able to play with his grandkids and so you know that strength training helps give you that energy it you know it helps you to be able to sustain that the energy with your grandkids and be able to give them strength to to hold them and walk up the stairs and to be able to get up out of your seat to be able to get into your car and out of your car to be able to walk for you know however many miles and so you know, I was talking to someone last week and they asked what, or not last week, last month. And they had asked what I did. And, you know, I told them what I did and they said, Oh, do you do weights? And I said, yes, we do weights. And you know, her response was, Oh, I don't, I don't like to do weights. And so, you know, it's just that mindset of, you know, I don't, I don't want to get bulky. I don't want to injure myself. You know, my grandmother used to give me a hard time because she'd be like, you're going to injure yourself lifting those weights. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm not. You can injure yourself doing anything, <laughs> right. you know? but I could be walking down the street and fall off the curb or, you know, or something. And, um, like this is this, you know, getting stronger, like helps me keep doing the things that I do in everyday life. And so it's just putting that into perspective. And so, um, you know, once people come in through the door and they start playing around with kettlebells, playing, playing around with dumbbells, you know, or barbells, you know, they start finding what their favorite thing is. And, um, like we had one girl come in a couple years ago and she did not like working out. Just absolutely did not like working out. Didn't like lifting weights, didn't like any of it, but was there because she thought it was the right thing to do. She wanted to get healthier, wanted to lose some weight. And <clears throat> now she's like, anytime a workout may be more conditioning heavy than strength heavy. Like she's like, man, I really wanted to lift more weights today. And so like, I love those comments, especially from women, because I'm like, yes like hell yes you do (laughs) and like the guys like the guys that are in our group like you know they're competitive for one you know towards each other not like super competitive but they like to kind of have that little competition there but you know but now some of the girls are like in on it and i'm just like like this is great because you know a little healthy competition but you know it's just fitness is no longer a chore it's something that people enjoy to come do and when when it gets to that point where you stop looking at it as a bad thing and you start looking at it as a positive thing, it's so much easier to maintain that. 
Like it's so much easier to keep doing that day in and day out. And it also just, it, it, you get out of that negative mindset and it, it's so much easier to go try new things. Like I, two months ago, I took my first, uh, bar class and I went into that and I was like, well, this will be cool. I don't know what this is going to be like. And it was, it was, you know, a Skype call or whatever. I don't remember what it was, but, um, Oh man, that destroyed me. Like she, the, the instructor, she's like, yeah, just, you know, use like, do you have like three pound weights? And I'm like looking around and I was like, no, I have like 10 pound weights. That's the smallest ones I have. And she's like, Ooh, yeah, you can try that if you want to. And I'm thinking like, you know, I'm, I'm a 200 pound man. I'm good. I'll be fine. <laughs> I was like 10 minutes in and I was, I was not even using weights anymore. And I was, I had my, you know, the computer muted cause the class was going, I'm like cussing up a storm in my basement. <laughs> just like I die, like everything hurts. <laughs> and it was so much fun, you know, cause it, it's not a, it isn't like a work it, working out and being healthy. Isn't punishment. Right. It's a reward. Yeah, and people see it as that, especially if they've gone out the night before and had, you know, beer and pizza, and they're like, oh, I have to work out really hard this day to, to you know, and I used to be that way, like, you know, and now I'm like, whatever, like, I'll, <laughs> you know, I'll work it off on Monday, you know, or whatever, you, you just, you can't go into that mindset or else you're going to allow it to control you, mm-hmm. and that's not what you want, you want to be able to control it. Yeah, um, man, I'm... I need to. I need to work out. Just talking about it's got me sweating. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, with as hot as it is. Well, yeah. I've been, <clears throat> I've been having to adapt because going outside is awful. Yeah. Damn. Oh yes. Yeah, it's been. Like I, was, I was actually loving the uh, the trails and everything have just been deserted. And that's like, that's one of my favorite ways to work out is, uh, is cycling. And I would go ride the trails and, you know, it was great. Nobody was there. There was no traffic. I I wasn't scaring people as I'm running up on them or anything. (laughs) Uh, like I did a couple trips from, uh, Fairmont to Morgantown and back like a couple, like 40, 50, 60 mile runs. And then like a month ago, it just decided it wanted to raise the temperature outside like 20 degrees and oh yeah now i go out and do like six miles and i'm just like (laughs) (laughs) it's awful yeah Um, so before we get uh wrapped up tell everybody that's listening where they can find all of your your stuff online yep so um, our website is just warriorbody.fit and then we're on um facebook is just warriorbody and then um, Instagram is just for your body underscore. Okay. And we'll link Where up. is the location of the gym? So we're on Scott Avenue. Um, I forget which, which exit that's right off of, but it's literally like right off the interstate. I don't know if you know where um, the, um, oh, shoot. I'm blanking. Tractor Supply is in Morgantown. Yeah. That's off exit one. Yes, there you go. Oh my God. I'm like, I don't know what exit it is. Exit one. <laughs> um, it's literally like right off that exit. Really? Yeah, we're like down the road. That's not far yeah, from like you, Jed. Is not <laughs> huh? So that's not far from you, Jed. No, it's really not. <laughs> so we'll be there. <laughs> not today because I have to write a six page networking architecture paper. Man. But maybe another day. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we'll we'll put all the links to your uh, your sites in the description, so it'll be easy for people to find. And okay. um, is there anything else that you wanted to mention before we uh, before we end? Um, I don't know. I mean, we're always welcoming in new members. We've got a couple more class times for for people to come into, and um, just just we have fun. You know, we have fun, we cheer each other on, and we, you know, keep things going. So, Awesome. Well, thank you, Mickey, for for coming on. Sorry it wasn't in person, but this is as best as we can do right now. All right. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah we got, all we can do is the best we can do. Yep. And I don't have to see Jed in person, and that's always a plus. 
So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so, all right. Thank you for coming on. Thanks, Jed, for uh, for being able to jump in today. No problem. So, all right, and we'll go ahead and end it here. So, <laughs> all right. Thank you, guys. Thank you.